my fellow architects, I'm sitting here in New York and I'm sending this message to you and to all of you who are a part of the architectural community, technologists and other sorts of experts in our space. And I'm fascinated by the sound of construction that is in the backdrop. But this fascination comes from a place of love and excitement because this is the sound of construction, this is the sound of building, this is the sound of commerce, this is the sound of jobs being created, this is the sound of capital being excited and investing in the built environment. So I think it's very appropriate that I have this in the background as I speak to you all. Let me take you into my confidence and the confidence of my colleagues at SIA. We are facing a world in which the role of the architect has been challenged by those um, within the built environment, by clients who don't fully understand the value proposition of the architect, by governments who may not understand the full potential of the architect in relation to catalyzing economies, spurring tourism, creating livable and lovable cities, and indeed the role of architecture as a form of production of knowledge, of, of both creativity and artistic endeavor. So this understanding of the act of architecture is not just about laying bricks together, but really about how a civilization chooses to see itself in the world by the streets that it creates, by the buildings that it makes, by the public spaces that it designs and enables, but also the sort of ecologies that flow from labor resources that are put in terms of making these buildings work, from the supply chains, the materials that we specify, and our relationship to nature. So, in taking you into our confidence, it is no accident if I say that the work of my term as president and with my colleagues and probably my successor will be very much about trying to unlock the full potential of SIA and the membership to achieve livable and lovable and equitable cities. To do this, we will require new committees. These committees will effectively respond to the market needs that we're seeing today, community engagement, a deeper understanding of heritage, a deeper understanding of the economics of the, of the profession, a deeper understanding of the changing landscape of legislation, and a deeper understanding of how education is changing around the world, whether it's from an AI perspective, the advent of technology, the cost of data, the ways in which buildings and spaces are being produced are very different to how the architect would have operated even 10 years ago. So my message to you all essentially is thus. I look forward to working with you to recreating and rebuilding a SIA that is truly engaged and at the forefront of conversations about how we need to reimagine our cities. These conversations will not only be led by just architects, they will be convened with urban designers, planners, engineers, etc. The architect works best as a convener of interdisciplinary insights, but welding it together with an understanding of the spatial implications of form, the technical implications of form, but most importantly, how form resonates over time. Because all too often, the act of making buildings or architecture is seen as a short-term activity against which short-term objectives can decide the fate of a building or not. The reality is that we require every single building in an age of scarce resources to play a part that is much larger than a three-year delivery mandate, than an instant profit margin, than the demands of a client who may not even be interested in the long-term life of the projects. Ultimately, society is the client. Ultimately, nature is our client. Ultimately, the planet is our client. And we need to reclaim an understanding of the importance of beauty, of function, of technological grace, and of ecological uh, austerity in order for us to create cities that will work. So in short, my dear fellows and friends, students, those of us who are in practice, those of us who are on the thinking side of the architectural profession, and that's not to imply that um, practice is not thinking, just to be clear. My message is thus, together let's hold hands, let's build trust, let's see what we can do 
to make a better sire for all. My being here at Cooper Union in New York, as both a scholar as well as a convener of conversations, crossing from architecture to art, social science, and indeed engineering, is that that is precisely where we need to be. And I'm excited by the prospect of a cross-continental dialogue, a global dialogue, if you will, that allow us to gather all of our resources and talents to make a better world for all. We have very specific challenges in South Africa, very specific ecological and um, economic circumstances, high degrees of inequality, and a youth dividend that, if we're not careful, will actually become a youth burden. I want to work with you all to see how we can create a world in which that youth dividend is unlocked. I will require your support. I will require your guidance. But most of all, if there's anything that you can give me, it is your trust that I'm here to serve your best interests as a profession and a community of built environment practitioners. Over the months, you will see certain proposal calls coming out. You will see interactions, calls for SIA to ask the membership, calls for you to sign up, calls for you to participate. Please join us in rebuilding and reshaping SIA in a way that it can respond to the efforts and requirements of the, of the 21st century, to take all of the good work that has been done by, by many talented and passionate predecessors, but at the end of the day, let us hold hands together as a community. And with that, I thank you.